this is about you Got my head spinning on my shoulders I feel a burn inside of my chest See the lines as they blur out I can feel it knocking me out You're bringing me higher and higher in every way Hey you guys, it's me And today, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you It's all about practice what you preach with me today Because I look at myself in the mirror, I don't feel good. I'm getting my hair done today, and so I usually would have washed it last night. So it is oily. I don't know if like the that Shea Moisture Conditioner just made it oilier than usual. I did put some, what is that stuff I like? The cocktail stuff, triple sec <laughs> cocktail. Anyway, I put some of that in there and I don't, it, I just don't like it, but I know that I'm getting it done today. I might actually get a blowout. I'm kind of craving a blowout. So anyway, then I was thinking, oh my gosh, you put this dark crease color on. Now you need your lashes. But I am not going to be weak and put my lashes on because I would rather be able to show you this. This little portion of the today's video, please hang with me because there's much more. This little portion of today's video is sponsored by City Beauty. I've had the nicest guy to work with that asked me to show you guys some of their products and I have been so impressed with him, the company, and the products. Matter of fact, this gloss right here is what I have on and Brooke keeps bugging me. When are you going to do that video so I can take that gloss? <laughs> and if you aren't familiar with City Lips, they do plumping lip glosses. So I wanted to use everything, and they do some skincare. I wanted to use everything just a little while before I showed it to you so I could tell you what I thought. So they were nice enough to send me the Uplift Firming Serum. I feel like my lips are so big, and it does not burn. It is not like Too Faced Lip Injection. It is not, what is another one that is just... The, it doesn't even um, burn as bad as the MAC um, plump, plumping glosses. It, right when you first put it on, you can tell just a little bit of a little bit of a sensation. And I did put everything on this morning the amount of time that you're supposed to. Like the multi-action sculpting cream, I put that on put it on and then I went outside and sat on the back porch and did kind of like my little morning routine. And I did what they said. I used an upward motion, gently massage a quarter size amount into skin until completely absorbed. Apply twice a day as a last step to your skincare routine. So I used this as a primer. And I actually, it comes with this little scoop, but I just used, you know, I always use what's on the lid until it doesn't have anything on it. And I could tell, I had forgotten about it because I went outside and was, had this harebrained idea for this video that I'm doing today. And you'll, all this will make sense in a little while. And I could feel, I felt like I felt this plump up. I don't know. I mean, who knows? I'm not here to tell you this is some miracle, but I'm just saying when I came back inside, I had kind of forgotten about it. And I kind of felt like this either tightened or plumped up. Okay, I also use the Uplift Firming Serum on my neck. I would say I like the cream better just because I'm a cream person. I'm not the biggest serum person. So that's what I liked better out of those two, the mascara. This is why I did not put on false lashes because there's no doubt about it. I love lashes. I just think they make the biggest difference. It's not hard for me and I just enjoy wearing them no matter where I'm going. But I wanted you to be able to see this mascara. This is, I think, the third time I've worn it and I love it. I will try to zoom in. So I don't know if you can see, they are so... Now they're not, let me see what it says it's supposed to do. Beyond mascara, volumizing treatment. Okay, if you like, if you like what I like, if you like Dior pump and volume, if you like uh, Bobbi Brown smoky eyelash, if you like, I mean it's better than CoverGirl Lash Blast, 
if you like Lash Paradise, it's better than that too because it, it has a similar wand, I think, as Lash Paradise. On oh, See how there is mascara, literally, you know, like going from the bristles to each other that gets on your lashes and it goes all the way to the end so it lengthens too and then we have these lip glosses so i've already told you how much i love the clear one and the clear one is what i have on i put it on before i went outside to sit i usually sit outside for about 30 minutes and i put on my makeup I have on Estee Lauder and the powders that I normally do because I wanted you to be able to look at my face and be able to tell. And so I put this on before I went outside, put my makeup on, I had already washed my face, and then I kind of wiped, took a wet washcloth, wiped what I had left of this on so I could get the, um, not mascara, but the foundation off, and I reapplied this. And I was just so surprised at the color it gave my lips. I guess because it like stimulates your lips and it pulls, you know, the hyaluronic acid and just the moisture and it kind of in a in a non-irritating way, it what it does is it kind of irritates your lips just like rubbing them or anything else would do. And so I was pretty daggone impressed with that. So I am going to wipe this off and we're going to try my favorites. So I cannot help but to want to go to this one first. And there are some matte, like this is a matte and this is a matte. And you can tell because it's in a frosty tube. I'll try one of those and then I'll try one of the creams and then one of the shimmers. So out of the two creamy ones, I'm going to try the lightest one. It's so pretty. That is so gorgeous. I love that it is not too opaque. I love the wand. So let's put what's on the other side. I love that. I think that is the perfect amount of nude lip. I will write them down in order or list them in order because they were so generous. This is another thing that really impressed me. They're giving us a 25% off coupon code for the rest of September and then it goes to 15% in October. So that was Tokyo Kiss. Okay, so let me try to get this one off. Okay. I think I got rid of Tokyo Kiss. I can't help it. We're going to have to do this one too. This one is Pink Nude. I think I just have some Kleenex stuck to my lips. Okay. Okay. This one is more opaque. But it's still, when I put my lips together, it's still a good one. I use all my real estate. Gorgeous. I am so glad that I swatched this one. Okay, you guys, I don't even want to put on another one. Okay, I'm gonna hold this one out. This goes with my vibe. Okay, this goes with the messy, dirty hair and the dark crease color. Cause it's, when you have this dark, it's good to do this light. Otherwise, unless you're going for the supermodel look, which you know I love too. Next favorite would be this one, and it is Nude York. I mean, these are like made for me. This one's going to have the sparkle. Peachy sparkle. Beautiful. These are the kind that you do this. Get it on your brush. And you always put some up here. Like that. And that, the way your lips will go back and the way that looks will just make your lips look even more full. They're all good. 
I just love it. So that is Nude York. This one is one of like one of my old school colors. This one is called San Diego. And it is one of those, I would still say it's kind of like a peachy pink, like a warm pink, a pink with gold shimmer. Beautiful. So pretty, you guys. And they feel so good. They do not hurt my lips. And I feel like my lips are this big, you know? Because they're just, I think what they do is like plump them out to, like they plump out the wrinkles. That's what they do. I'll do the lightest one first, which is Blush Rose. They really, I really think they chose some good tones. Definitely opaque. Not bad. So I just put it on the bottom and I, what do they feel like? Oh my goodness. I love it. Okay, I need to, so you can see how that being over there makes my lips look wider, my mouth look wider. That is beautiful. If you like a liquid lip look, that is beautiful. It is very, with liquid lips, you have to have one that isn't streaky. The one that goes on like this, and see what I do is, you can feel it drying now. What I do is fold my lips like that or open them. That was, I think that was toilet paper. And I get in any of those crevices. Beautiful. I mean, if you like this look, which I do sometimes, I do, especially like, I'm thinking black leather moto. Okay, the last one, which I would say is the darkest one, but it's still not like dark, dark. It's called rosy mauve. This is the kind that's good to even line with. So I'm gonna be careful. Oh my gosh, you guys, that color is gorgeous. I had only tried the, um, just my typical, I had only tried like a sparkle one and a, the, one of the nudie ones. Oh my goodness, that is so pretty. Should I leave that on? I think I'm going to leave this on just because, just because I'm going to go outside. The theme of this video it's not really the theme of this, but a little part of this video is going outside your comfort zone. So I'm going to keep this on just because. So thank you so much to City Beauty for being so generous with me and with us. The crazy part, I know you're wondering, did I lose my mind? The crazy part in the beginning of this video is all about tomorrow's video. So if you want to know what that was all about, then stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Today we are going to talk about, I was looking through, I think I was putting one of my videos in a playlist and I need to just revamp those playlists. I saw Happy Marriage, the playlist for Happy Marriage, and I thought, you know, I need to pick up on that and kind of just include that into just, you know, things that I've been through and things that I just want to tell you about, I guess stories of my life, you know. And so I was thinking today would be a great time right after I posted our Coastal Dream House video. By the way, I hope everyone knows and I hope I made it clear. I feel bad about this, but I, we are not building on that water. The neighborhood we're building is 
right there, well, everything I showed you. We could never afford now that land right on the water. I mean, it's millions. And I don't know if I'd want to be like right on that water just because of hurricanes and stuff. So we bought as close as we could. We are right behind the clubhouse. So hopefully we, we've positioned our house on the lot and the way the lots are you know, set, I'm hoping to have a great view of the pool and the clubhouse and the marina. I've always told you guys how much I love marinas and just the sky looking that way is so beachy and so beautiful and bright and the air and the breeze it is amazing it is a glorious feeling just to be down there i'm sorry if i made it seem that way i'm just excited that our, i'm going to live in a neighborhood that is on the water and that sidewalk i was on that's going to be my loop that i walk every day and so of course we're excited but what i wanted to talk about is the compromises, and I guess that's the word I want to use today, is compromise, the art of compromise. And so I wanted to just kind of go through what we've been through to get to this point of happiness, enthusiasm, I mean, it, we're excited, and you know, best of all, and for the first time in this whole house hunting, even thinking about a house experience, we are on the same team and we're on the same page and we're dreaming the same dreams and we're talking about the same things. thought about that this morning when John came up and I thought, you know, I want to talk about that. Okay, so when we first started thinking about getting a new house, because we really never had thought about it, and in the last, I guess, probably since Brooke has graduated and gotten older, and since John, he is 10 years older than I am, I just turned 50, he will not turn 60 until January, but we're basically, you know, almost 10 years apart. And so, you know, life has seasons, and we're entering a different season. To me, that means, like I've told you, pursuing my dreams, what makes me happy, and YouTube is a big part of that. Now I'm letting myself have a little part, just a little part of my importance. You know what I mean? And I think that comes with your 40s. You know, my children just don't need as much of my time. So I actually have some time that I can dedicate to what I love and what I'm passionate about. In this new season of our life, John is tired of taking care of the yard. We, we, you know, we had this yard and we loved the trees. Now we're kind of like over the trees because we've just had to keep raking up leaves and paying for them to get taken down after a hurricane, you know, stuff like that. And we used to have a big swing set and a big trampoline in our backyard and you know we loved it kids were going up and down the road our kids were outside until it was dark and we're just in a new stage we both kind of you know were entertaining the idea and the first place we started with was landfall because john loves to play golf and i wanted a gated community we went to a real estate agent there and we looked around and we just in our price range it was just you were definitely paying for the neighborhood. And, you know, then John realized, well, you know, even if I could play here every day, are my friends going to want to come and pay that big amount? I mean, you know, are we going to want all these rules and, you know, bylaws? And are we going to want to live here? And, you know, it started a lot of doubts. So we kind of chilled for a while. Then uh, coronavirus hit. And I remember telling my mom, whew, I'm glad I don't have any great big house payment right now. You know, I'm glad I'm in my comfort zone, basically, which we were. But it was basically because we couldn't find anything in our price range that we liked. And we kind of felt the new, the mystique, you know, kind of came off of that neighborhood. We went through that. Okay, then came, you know, I told you I was going to tell you about the storage building. Okay, so then I thought, Okay, I asked John, I said, would you care if I got a storage building? And he said, no, I think that's a good idea. And so that was a little compromise in our minds. 
I rented a storage building, which was a great thing. I mean, really, that was a great compromise, and I still have stuff I'm taking up there until we move. Right around this time, I'm driving by this new neighborhood when I'm coming home. This was right around the end of school, before school got closed for the pandemic. And I notice a sign and one of those little trailers they put up for like a new neighborhood and it's going down this road that I probably had never been down. I knew that the water way was down there, but I had never been down that road. But the sign looked so nice and everything looked really nice. So one day I told John, I said, let's ride up and just see what that is. And that is the first time we ever discovered our new neighborhood that we're building in. And it was very, very, I mean, it looked like nothing. They had the clubhouse built, but not furnished or open. I don't think there was maybe two houses, but the the streets weren't open. And just, it was very, very, it was, they were having to stall because of the virus. But those oak trees and that water view is intoxicating. As soon as you come down the road and you see it, we fell in love. And we couldn't quit going there. So we talked to the guy that worked there and we, we weren't sure. All along, you guys know, I have just always loved that neighborhood that I took you to, which was Parkside. And I knew of Autumn Hall, which is the one that I showed you in the video, but I never thought we could afford Autumn Hall or I never thought John would look over there. And I even told you in the video, John doesn't want to live here. So we have this thing going where he really loves the neighborhood on the water. And I did too, but I didn't want to build. Right off the bat, I didn't see a house plan that I wanted. And it's a little, it's 10 minutes further away from my parents. Well, he didn't want to live in town he didn't like houses that, that, that were that close together. And, you know, there were things he didn't like. So here we are. We both, we love each other so much. We respect each other's opinion, but we're really two different people. And that really makes us get along. Most of the time, we kind of even each other out. But we're both at the age we don't want to give in that much. You know, we're just kind of like, we want what we want. And we know, you know, life is short and we need to grab it while we can. And so here goes the compromise. He compromised and we looked at those neighborhoods. We called our agent again, Gwen, and we said, we want to look again. Okay, in between this, you guys know we almost bought a house in another golf, another golf place and another gated community. I think we both knew at that time we were settling. And I'm so, I feel like we dodged the biggest bullet. But that taught us something too. And what that taught us is don't settle. That's when we came home, we thought, okay, that's it. We're going to wait until we agree. We can afford what we want which we could always afford it, but you have to be willing to do it. And we thought we're going to just fix up this house and enjoy it. So we did that and we've enjoyed it and we don't regret anything. But when you start getting into how much like to redo a bathroom is like twenty to $25,000 and the mess and inconvenience, you know, then the shine starts wearing off of the renovating. Back to he looked at those places, and I know in my heart, if I would have looked at him at that house and said, I want this, he would have done it. But something inside of me said, we need to go back, and we need to look at that neighborhood that John loves. And we did, and I had this feeling of peace come over me, because nothing had ever felt right. I mean, I could have been a brat and forced him to move to any of those neighborhoods. Or not even forced him, but really, really told him, this is what will make me happy, this is what I want. But every time something felt weird and I just couldn't, you know, get into it. 
And so when we be- went back to that neighborhood, it was just like, oh my gosh, okay. It's in the same wonderful school zone. It's beautiful. It's what John likes. And best of all, Gwen, our real estate agent, found a house plan that was, when she brought it over here, she said, Lisa, this is going to be perfect. You are going to have your whole upstairs. You're going to have the biggest room. You're going to have a closet. You're going to have a porch. And it was just like, oh my gosh, this plan is made for us. We went and walked in it and it just came together like nothing. I mean, we are so on the same page. We are so united. We're so on the same team. We've got my parents with us and the kids are excited about their new rooms, their new bathrooms, and it's all just perfect. I'll wrap this up because I know this has been forever. Always compromise. When you love your spouse, there's more than love. To love someone, anybody can love someone, but you have to respect them. And you have to respect their differences. You have to think, I mean, like even if their differences get on your nerves, you have to think about the things that and who they are that make you love those things that get on your nerves. You know what I mean? Just value that other person enough to compromise. And so that is my little compromise story of the day. I'm sure that you guys have been through this before and I've been through it before where it didn't work out well. I think a lot of it comes with maturity. So that's why I wanted to share my story with you. This gives you a little background too into what's been going on around here, sharing more of my life with you. And um, so I feel certain you've gotten a good grasp of my outfit of the day. I wore this on purpose and I will tell you all about it in tomorrow's video. See you then. Bye-bye.